Today, I'm sharing my recipe for a one gallon jackfruit mead with you. So let's get started. So if you're anything like me, you might have, when you heard jackfruit went, oh my God, what is that? And I'll show you a picture of it on screen. I had never seen one. And the only reason that I'm even using this fruit is because I was at Walmart and they so happened to have jackfruit frozen. And so I bought quite a few bags of this jackfruit and I said, all right, well, I'm a mead channel, so let's go ahead and make some mead. And we put together this recipe with the recipe card you see on screen. I'm gonna come back to that recipe card, but let's first talk about what jackfruit even tastes like, because that's step one. It's like, wh what is it and <laughs> what does it taste like? So jackfruit, obviously a fruit. And the interesting thing about it is often used as a like substitute for meat sometimes. Some people say that uh, it is, well, talking about the taste, I've heard two big things here. One, some people say it's a taste combination of banana, apple, and mango, which I get a little bit of that essence um, from what they're talking about. But then the other side, which I found weird, is some people said that it has a similar flavor to pulled pork whenever you cook it. Now, we didn't cook ours and make a pulled pork mead. I don't think I'll ever do that but we went ahead and, and got this jackfruit. We, first of all, thawed it out because we needed to, and we uh, started our recipe, which here's that recipe card again. So this is that one gallon recipe. It has about three pounds of honey, so we're more in the standard strength of meads with this. We used the Lauvin QA23 because I wanted to get more of a tropical flavor, and the QA23 gets a lot of that, so it's kind of nice. It's got a good temperature range as well. And then of course, water. We are using tap water in this circumstance and quite a bit of jackfruit. For this recipe, we used 48 ounces or three pounds of jackfruit, which was a, a kind of expensive, not gonna lie, but I thought it'd be a, a jackfruit bomb, which it kind of was. We fermented in a vessel that was larger than one gallon because I knew there'd be the uh, volume taken up by the fruit, which is super important if you are making something with fruit. Generally, you wanna go in a a bucket or something like that where you can have more than the end amount of mead that you want. So we ended at, you know, one gallon, but we started at 1.25-ish or so. Anyways, so we went ahead, we got all of our ingredients. We started by thawing out the jackfruit. We put it into a bucket and into a vessel. And then we also put our water in, our three pounds of honey, and we took a drill bit thing and we just stirred the crap out of it. Literally just stuck it in there and it basically pulverized the jackfruit in this very fibrous, kind of stringy fruit uh, texture turned into that in the actual fermenter. It's kind of weird looking, but that's what we did. We made sure that we were at the proper temperature to be able to add our yeast. So then we pitched our yeast. We are adding our Fermate O or our, our yeast nutrient in this circumstance at the 24 hour mark. So after we had pitched our yeast, we closed up the container. We made sure, I, I have to say this, even though it should be obvious now as a professional mead channel, I sanitized all my equipment before I did everything. So don't, don't come at me and say I didn't, because I did. Sanitized everything, of course. We added our yeast and we let it go for about 24 hours. At 24 hours, we went ahead and added our Fermate O to add some yeast nutrient to this. We normally do this because the yeast, they get started and then that food comes in later. The best nutritional schedule for yeast is a staggered fermentation or staggered nutrient schedule, excuse me, where you add the nutrients over time. It's like snacks instead of one big meal. The mead was then closed up it took about, I wanna say two to three weeks for this to ferment completely out. We did in fact take a gravity reading to start off with. So we were starting at about 1.078 was our starting gravity there. Of course we went over with our water amount too. So anyways, math wise, it makes sense. After the primary fermentation, this was at 1.000, so 1.078 to 1.000, means we're right underneath the 10.5% mead, roughly in that realm. This thing was nowhere clear after we got it out of the primary and I knew it was done. Um, I went ahead and racked it into a new container because I wanted to get off of the jackfruit, which then we just kind of tossed away the old jackfruit. And from there, we let it set for a while. 
and it sat for probably a month, honestly, because I tasted it and it was really young and the jackfruit taste was not great. It was not very enjoyable. I knew this was gonna need a lot of uh, sweetness because this had kind of a tartness to it, which was odd. Again, I've never really had jackfruit, so. So then, after all of that, a month goes by, we stabilized it, back sweetened it with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are in uh, tandem used to halt any further fermentation, which we needed to back sweeten this. So we wanted to make sure and halt any fermentation. You can of course pasteurize if you would like to do that, which is heating the meat up to kill off your yeast. So we stabilized it. This needed one pound of honey for this whole gallon of mead because it was, again, kind of tart. So we are, our final gravity here was about 1.030 after we back sweetened. We did not need any acid adjustments. This thing again was very unclear when I didn't really think I was gonna be able to clear it. And I still don't think I can easily. I did add sparkaloid, which is a, a clearing agent often used and I've, had, I've used it with great success. Sparkaloid didn't do anything in this circumstance and that's okay. After we did all of that sparkaloid and we let it set for a while longer to make sure there was no re-fermentation, I said, all right, it's been another month. Let's go ahead and bottle it. So we went ahead, of course, and then put it into bottles. And I got quite a few of these. I mean, it's a one gallon, so I only probably got three or four wine bottles worth and a couple, maybe 187s, uh, excuse me, 375s. Anyways, let's go ahead and crack this baby open. It's time for a tasting of a jackfruit mead, something I've never had, something you might have never had. Let's see if it's worth it to make into a mead. Here's what it looks like. At this point, we are three and a half months old, I wanna say. Not very clear. Again, I've talked about this a little bit ago. The coloring on it's kind of weird. It's almost neon-y. Um, I'm sure I could have cleared this, but the pectin or whatever the thing in here, the jackfruit that makes it super hazy um, is not going away. Time might clear up these bottles, but I would rather just go ahead and taste it now. So let's go ahead, get a, an aroma check. This is a funky fruit. I get the like tropical realm they're talking about. And I did use orange blossom honey, so it's gonna have some of that profile, but I do get that mango-y, banana, apple-y profile. I'm not loving the nose though. It's just got this kind of like funkiness to it. Yeah. So let's go and taste it. weird. It does, it has that, that culmination of tropical flavors. Does not have pulled pork flavor, to be clear. It is still, of course. The sweetness is counteracting some of that tartness that's there. It's a weird tasting mead. Jackfruit's not my favorite uh, fruit that I've ever used, to be quite clear. Is it bad? No, at three months, honestly, I don't think this is bad. I think it's the flavor profile that's just odd. And I'm sure things will mellow. With time, everything will start to come down and kind of work together more. I'm not really getting any alcohol, heat, or presence necessarily. The sweetness is there. The, the tartness is balanced. Doesn't really need any oak or anything. It's just an odd flavored mead. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure somebody will like this. I am very curious if you've made a jackfruit mead of your own or had the jackfruit itself, what you think of it. I'm sure people love it around. And I'm not gonna sit here and say, don't make this, because I, I think people are gonna like this. I personally just, I don't love it. And I wanted to try it, and here it is. I tried it. It's not really for me. I probably won't make more jackfruit mead in the future, but I would be curious to see if you want to make it. I'd be curious to hear if you've made it and what you think of it itself. But yeah, so if you've ever wondered, can jackfruit be made into a mead? Well, of course, you can make virtually anything into a mead. In my personal opinion, is it my favorite one I've ever made? It's way low on the tier list, unfortunately. So with that, I hope you feel inspired to maybe go try jackfruit mead or really any fruited or traditional mead for that matter. I have a lot of mead recipes out there. If you want to quickly find a mead recipe, just Google it up, find a combo and put man-made mead after it. And I guarantee you, I've probably done something adjacent to it or the thing you're looking for. So I spent a lot of time on these recipes. This one, maybe not as much because it's not necessarily as trusted or tried or true. I'm sure there are ways to do this better. 
Uh, and I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear your jackfruit experience, and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I'll be back with more regular meads, silly meads, mead tests, and everything surrounding mead. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want to see more mead content. We are on the push for about 60,000 subscribers, and I think we can do it, but I need your help. I'll see you in the future with another video. Cheers.